Hey crafty peeps, I have another bee video for you and it is going to be more neutral and rustic and I think you're going to enjoy it. I also want to thank today's sponsor, Yusui. I hope I said that right. I will talk more about them and their infrared treatment later in the video. All right, let's get to it. This is my first time trying this technique. Um, if you saw my collab with Farm Charm Chic, uh, she did this. So you just take a regular piece of tissue, you tape it down onto a piece of printer paper, and then you just feed it through your printer. So now this image is um, printed onto tissue paper. And this is just something I found off Google Images, and I'm just uh, cutting it down. Um, I've seen a lot of DIYers use this method, and I kept meaning to try it, and I am so glad that I did because is not only is it easy, but it looks so good and it's so inexpensive. So this is just a Dollar Tree block that looks farmhousey. I just take some um, Mod Podge, put it on very thin um, because this is tissue, you don't need a lot. And then I just lightly put it down. I use my Cricut um, tool just to smooth it out. Um, you just, again, you really just want to take your time. You don't want to rip the tissue. Um, but again, I mean, this project is so quick and I, I just can't believe, I cannot believe how good this looks. You could just, there's so many options that you could make with these. And with a little dollar twenty five block from um, Dollar Tree, think of the endless amounts of decor you can make with these. Uh, so, Again, that's all I do is just a little bit of Mod Podge there. Um, I personally did not put any over the top. I didn't feel like it needed it, but you can do that as well. And then just with my sanding block, I sanded around the edges so that everything, you know, was on there nice and, you know, tight around the sides. That's it. It stands up on its own and I'm loving the rustic look of this. Also because this particular board has the indentation so that it looks like slat board, I went ahead and just took my tool and pushed it down into those cracks. And now look at this, it looks even more rustic and vintage. This is another technique that I have seen a couple times on Instagram and I wanted to try it myself. These are the thermal laminating sheets uh, that you can get at the office supply store. You know, they're so you can laminate like a document. So I just cut a little piece out. You can get quite a bit out of one sheet. And then you just put a piece of paper down like this. Uh, this is parchment paper. And, oh, I forgot to say, it's shiny side up for that laminating sheet. And then you heat at 385 degrees for 15 seconds. Now, my big heat press um, is broken, so I had to use my little mini one, and it, it's harder because I don't know exactly the heat on it. So you can see it actually scorched it a little bit, but it looks all right because I am doing rustic, so we're good. Then I printed out an image on my sublimation printer. If you don't have a sublimation printer, you can actually get sublimation pens and paper and draw stuff. It's really cool. Um, but I'm just going to turn that image down. This is heat resistant tape just to keep it in place. And now I am going to heat this and this one you have to heat for one minute. So with a little mini iron like this, a minute all around takes a long time. You definitely want one of the bigger heat presses and I'm bummed that mine is currently broken. Okay, and so with sublimation, it is a hot peel, so you wanna peel it right away. Um, I do have gloves, but this one wasn't too hot. It's usually hotter if you're doing it like on a shirt. Um, it was giving me a little, a little bit of a problem here with the tape, but I do get it off. And I wanna be very gentle when I'm taking it off because if I've missed an area, I can go back and heat it. And sure enough, I did miss a little area right there in the center. So I go back and just heat that one area. So it sublimates down to that lamination sheet. And as you can see here, look at how professional that looks. Uh, of course, obviously there's hangover. So I'm going to flip it over and you got to wait till it's cooled off because it's really hot when you first take it <laughs> apart. And then I'm cutting off that excess laminate sheet and then that's it. I take um, sandpaper again, just uh, along the sides in case I had any rough edges. And that is it for this project. It's so easy. Um, oh my gosh. 
gosh, I'm loving these easier things that just look so high end. And again, I'm just going to cut this down where the um, board has that indentation and it gives it even more rustic look. Again, I like how it got scorched a little and gives it that look. Today's sponsor is Yusui. Again, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so what their product is, they have a different infrared therapy products. Um, this particular one is for your neck. Um, when they reached out to me, I was like, absolutely, I need this product. Um, if you don't know, I was in a car accident like 15 years ago and I got severe whiplash and I have had neck and back pain ever since and sadly it's getting progressively worse. Uh, sitting and crafting is really hard on me um, but I do it because I love it. So I definitely wanted to try this product out. So what is in infrared therapy? So the infrared can help with blood circulation, it can help relax the muscles, um, it can just help the whole pain problem there. So this is what it is. It kind of looks like a headband, um, but what this does is this heats up. There are three levels, low, medium, and high. Um, if, let's just say for, you know, argument's sake, the, the, the infrared did nothing for you. The heat alone is worth the product because heating your neck is a pretty difficult task. You know, you can lay on a heating pad, but, but I really love this. And it, you just wear it 20 minutes a couple times a week and it should really help. So I just put it around my neck like this. I don't turn it on until it's on my neck because of the red light, um, just, just for that extra precaution. So it has a little uh, button right here that I can press, and then you can press it uh, as you need it for the heating. And then hands-free, I can craft. Um, if my neck's starting to hurt while I'm crafting, I can put it on, have the heat, um, and then it automatically turns off after the 20 minutes. So it is super easy to use. And really that heat for me really helps relax my neck. And the more you use it, the more benefit you will have. And I've just been using it for a week and I already like it. So I'm excited to see how it progresses um, in the healing of my neck over the next few weeks. I will have a link to it down in my description. And if you use code LK20, you will get 20% off of your purchase. I did this one the same technique with the thermal laminating sheet as well as sublimit, sublimated. I am loving this image. Um, so I actually had a little, um, po I, I messed up in the little corner there and here's a great way to fix it. And one of those things where by fixing it, I like it better. So I just took a brad and I cut the bottom part off because I'm not pushing this through like paper like you would for a brad. So I just cut off the little prongs and then just with some hot glue I put them on the two corners here I don't know if you say corners like sides because <laughs> it's a hexagon uh, but there are just these cute little brads that kind of have a yellow pearl in the middle and I think it looks so cute I mean super easy I didn't show you the process again since I just showed it on the last DIY but I, I think I'm going to be making a lot of these because I just, I just can't believe how easy and high end they look. I grabbed this wreath form from Dollar Tree. It's red, so I took it outside and spray painted it black. I thought red was a really interesting choice, Dollar Tree. <laughs> so now I'm just taking a little piece of you would kind of call it like chipboard, or it's what comes in the back of twelve by twelve scrapbook paper, and I'm gonna outline this B. So it takes me two of these sheets. And by doing that, I'm going to, you know, have a hefty background to this. I'm not making a wreath. I'm, I'm making a little sign. Um, and we're going to do that by using some of these fabrics from Dollar Tree as well. So now that I have all my pieces cut out, I'm going to go ahead and cover those with fabric. So I will do that um, by using some Mod Podge. Um, so on this one, I was wanting to make sure I had the bees all going the right way, but I forgot the fact that the, the wings are actually tilted and they don't go upright. So, you know, but it still works. They were at least going the right direction as far as like not upside down. <laughs> so once I get that, um, Mod Podge on there, then I just go ahead and cut around um, 
particularly this ring. Ring? Wing. <laughs> uh, I do love my um, Ginger sewing scissors. These will last you a lifetime. I have had a pair since I was in college. I took a sewing class like at 19 years old and I still have those scissors. They still work great. I lost them and I had to buy another pair, but now I have two. Anyhow, I'm gonna do that for both wings. Now I'm just gonna cut this, uh, well now you could say gingham or buffalo check, whichever one you use, and I'm using my other sewing sh scissors, the, um, what do you call that? I know that I cannot think of the name, but it's the zigzag shape. And anyhow, I cut those in the zigzag shape just to give it kind of a fun country look. And I'm going to add them to this yellow fabric that I have on the body of the bee. And of course, this is just gonna give our bee its stripes. So I can continue to do that all the way up. And now I will just cut the excess off and my bee will have its black stripes. Um, this project was also very easy to make. Um, just, and you know what, if you don't have the fabric, you know you can use pattern paper. And I like, you don't even have to have a bee theme. You can just use, you know, yellow checkered or yellow polka dots or there's so many options. And I just, I just adore, you know, using this. So now I'm just gonna lay uh, my bee on top of all the pieces here and this is what it will look like. And then you can use um, any kind of glue that you think will stick best to your surface, um, whether it's paper, fabric. Um, I did use hot glue. Hot glue and wire don't always go very well together. So I recommend doing something like super glue, maybe some E6000. I was out of the clear, so I had to go ahead and use my hot glue gun, um, but if you're gonna want it to stay together, that is what I recommend. Um, you can always do both too, so you can use your hot glue in some spots and then regular glue in the other, and then you're gonna get a really good um, adherence because you're gonna get quick and then you're gonna get long term. But like I said, I actually had some clear E6000 on order, so I couldn't use it for this pro project. Um, and so I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do with this. This could be cute if you added it to like a big circle wreath, you could make a sign out of it. Um, it took me a minute to figure out, but what I did is I grabbed a black uh, sandwich board sign that I got from Michaels, and I decided that a good thing to do is to put a piece of double side, so you've got your Velcro here, so you know one side's the like, coarse and the one side's the soft. And so I'm just peeling up the second side of that Velcro. And then I'm gonna stick my bee on there. And so now what I can do is when I'm doing bee, th bee season, I can just put that on there, Velcroed on. And then when I'm ready to put bees away, I can take this off and put it away. And then I can add something else seasonal to this board. So it really gives this board like a lot of extra use. This is another technique that I wanted to try. Um, so you grab yourself a picture frame. I love these ones from Dollar Tree. They look really rustic and kind of shabby chic. And you're gonna pull the glass out and you're gonna clean it. Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit lazy on this <laughs> because my cleaning supplies are in the house and not in my craft room. But you will go ahead and print out any image that you want in the simpler the easier. So I just printed out this B on from my printer and now I'm going to center my piece of glass over the top of it and then just with a paint pen I'm going to trace out this B. Now I'm using a Posca marker. Those are going to be like your high end really good paint pens. I think it's a great idea um, to go to Michaels and grab yourself a black and a white because they're a great staple to have um, in your craft um, supplies. So again, I'm just tracing this. Now, the technique, the thing I saw was actually then they flip it over and they paint on the back just like bold colors and all these different things. And I thought that was what I was gonna do, but then I decided to take this video to a more rustic and neutral, um, you know, way. So painting it bright colors didn't really make sense. 
So I grabbed this piece of scrapbook paper here um, and I'm gonna cut it out to a five by seven or in this case a seven by five because I have it going horizontally. So you wanna make sure your words are going the right direction. Um, and then I'm just going to put it behind this image and put it back in the frame and that's it. Another super simple project. Um, like I said, you can paint the back. You could use other mark, uh, paint markers and color it in. But I, like I said, I really wanted to keep this neutral to go with this vignette that I'm doing. This particular one has uh, lyrics, not lyrics, uh, music on the other side. Um, so you could do either way, but I liked just the words better. And that's it. I mean, what a super easy, uh, product project like I'm showing you there you could color it yellow um, so I also printed out a picture of my dog and I'm gonna do the same technique but I'm gonna do the bold um, colors on it and I'm really excited about it um, I got that idea from um, oh gosh I want to say Amanda Nelson but Amanda doesn't seem like that's right Darn it. Anyhow she's somebody I follow on Instagram that does the coolest painting techniques I remember it's Andrea Nelson. I'll link her below. These metal uh, designs from Dollar Tree can be a little tricky to design with um, since this is going to be a little bit more neutral, farmhousey, rustic uh, video. Um, that makes this really easy. I'm just covering it in white chalk paint. Um, actually, I think it is um, plaster. Plaster is the color. And I'm just going to kind of put it on, not covering it super good, um, because I want the metal to show through. And I'm, I want it to show through that I'm even going to uh, take my sand sandpaper to it too. Um, again here I'm going to use my Posca markers and I'm just going to outline. Um, I, I went back and forth if I was going to use the yellow, how much color I was going to use because I like just the rustic look. But I went ahead and just added this yellow because it is so faint and it does give it, you know, it gives it a little bit of the color that I think the bee deserves. Uh, the black to me was like kind of vibrant and was kind of taking away from the rusticness and that is where the sandpaper uh, came in and I really think that was what made it have that good rustic look. My next plan was to grab a frame and then put some chicken wire behind it. I did not have the proper frame in my stash. I couldn't believe it, but I did have this sign from the 99 cent store that I bought for this exact reason. So I'm popping off that top piece. It was, you know, a fall um, piece of decor, but for 99 cents, I knew I'd pop that off and have this cute sign. Uh, so it's coming in handy because look at how good my B fits on it. <laughs> So this one was a little tough because my B didn't quite fit inside it and just barely fit on the frame part. So I used uh, some e oh, I used some super glue, I think. I can't remember. What do I use here? Yeah, I used some super glue. And I glue those spots and then I put some weight on top of it because it's barely touching that frame. So it's, it's going to take a bit to adhere to it. And then I just added a little yellow gingham bow um, on the bee's neck. And then this project's complete. Another super easy project. For this project, I am using this beehive wreath form from Dollar Tree, as well as this tag sign from Hobby Lobby. It retails for $17.99 and it was on their 90% off sale. So for $1.79, I got this cute tag and I'm just flipping it over because I like the neutralness of this. And then I'm just gluing this down. This is hardly a DIY. It's just these two items and I'll tell you why I'm not doing more to it. It's because I like to have a big piece that's kind of in the background of my decor that's not you know overly decorated and it just really helps give height and dimension um, to your decor. Oh and then my cat OJ says hi. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed all the bee decor that I made today. Um, I have three other bee videos because I just find that bees are so fun. So check those out above and until next time, happy crafting.